defending world champion New York Yankees rolling into town for the first of three on Friday night. Urban Santana struggled a little bit, and there was a huge collision at the plate. Marcus Sharon knocking Bobby Wilson out, but of course, that game ended on this swing of the bat. A two-run home run off the bat of Kenji Morales, giving the Halos game one by the final of six to four. On Saturday afternoon here at the Big A, a little different story. The left-hander, possible future Hall of Famer Andy Pettit, was lights out, had the cutter going, and his offense contributed as well. Robinson Cano, four hits, as the Yankees took game two to set up the rubber match. It is a glorious afternoon here at the Big A as we get ready for the rubber game of the series between the defending world champion New York Yankees and your Los Angeles Angels. Hi, everybody from inside the Big A. Victor Rojas alongside my partner, Mark Gubza. Glad you could join us on this beautiful day for Angels baseball. And as we pointed out, it's been a little bit of a seesaw battle between these two teams over this weekend. A nice matchup on Friday. Yankees battled back last night, setting up tonight. Well, we had that collision at the plate. You mentioned that, that drama there. And, of course, the offense responds right back at the bottom half of the inning with three runs. Then Kendra Morales wins it with a two-run home run in the eighth. Yesterday, Andy Pettit was just too good. Robinson Cano. He's had a tremendous series. Kenny Morales had a good one. Of course, Bobby Array has been swinging it back. It's going to be up to the offense to set the tone. Scott Casimir throws some zeros, but the offense needs to put up some tallies early to be able to make them relax. You mentioned Scott Casimir getting the start this afternoon against the New York Yankees. And for Angels pitchers, really starting pitchers, when they are good, they're very good. The team wins. When they have not been so good, the team hasn't won. I, I think when you look at this Angel ball club, it's been predicated their bell to win the games is with that pitching staff. And I think one through five has been very good on occasion. That's when they're throwing strikes. In the nine wins, only five walks. An ERA barely over two, five, 50 strikeouts. But in their losses, look at 22 walks, falling behind, not as aggressive. When you fall behind and walk guys against some of the clubs they played early in the season, that's what happens to him, and that's why you see the ERA so high and the loss total up. Scott Casimir will be going up against Javier Vasquez. We're ready for baseball here at the Big A, the one and only visit to the Big A by the New York Yankees. The rubber game of the series will have the lineups and first pitch right after this.
Howard's official superstores of Angels baseball. Nobody beats Howard's. By your Southern California Hyundai dealers. Want more MPG? Hyundai has it. With seven models to get 30 miles per gallon or more, Hyundai is now the most fuel-efficient car maker in America. And by Shakey's Pizza. What honor was Shakey's founder Sherwood Shakey Johnson awarded? Go to shakey.com slash trivia. There's that gorgeous view from out in right field. Scott Kazmir getting ready to throw the first pitch this afternoon. Scott comes into this ball game with a one and one mark, a 7.45 ERA. McGooby, a guy that we saw in his last start, making that transition, changing that windup a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of an adjustment with the windup over the head with the glove. They have better downward action on the fastball and slider. And able to pitch inside to the right-handed batters, which he couldn't do. The last time he faced the Yankees in New York. That was his first start coming off the disabled list. Kashmir going four innings, giving up six runs on eight hits. Misses outside. It's one ball, one strike. We'll show you the lineups for the New York Yankees here in just a moment. Derek Jeter, of course, the leadoff man and future Hall of Famer at 333. Three home runs, 11 runs batted in. He was two for five in yesterday's game. And Kashmir quickly ahead at one ball and two strikes. But it's the time for Scott Casimir to use that slider. Derek Jeter has had a tough time against Scott Casimir throughout his career. Only 154 batting average. Little tapper on the third base side. Casimir will field and throw. There's out number one. As we take a look at the lineup for Joe Girardi's New York Yankees. Who roll into the Big A this afternoon with a 12 and 5 mark? Derek Cheever leading things off. Nick Swisher in the two spot in right field. Marching shared first base. Alex Rodriguez and cleanup man at third. Robbie Cano at second. Jorge Posada DHing this afternoon. Marcus Thames in left. Curtis Granderson in center. And Francisco Cervelli getting back to back starts behind the plate. Nick Swisher comes in batting 236 with a couple of home runs. Nine runs batted in, hit the home run on Friday night. His second, that is. Okay, back in the fourth inning. That's the blow that knotted that game up before the Morales home run in the eighth. Another first pitch strike. Kind of the signs you'd like to see from a starting pitcher. Especially Scott Casimir, a guy that's been identified as a high pitch count pitcher as far as the fifth and sixth inning always up around 100 get some early quick outs you got a chance to go deeper in the game <laughs> missing away and it's two balls in his strike angels trying to Pick up the win this afternoon and take the series from the Yankees. They split that four-game series against the Detroit Tigers. Coming off the sweep of the Toronto Blue Jays last weekend. Swisher bounces that one foul. It's two balls, two strikes. The homestand continues tomorrow. The Cleveland Indians rolling into town. Cleveland's been playing better baseball of late. Fausto Carmona has been pitching better. Jake Westbrook coming up. back. Yeah. 2-2. Two -two. Line right to short. Nice Asturias has got it. There is out number two. Take a look at the Hyundai keys to the game, Mark. Scott Casimir, 6-6 six six mark against the Yankees. Very good ERA. 3-1-5 and 15 starts. Posada's has had some pretty good success at 4-0-7, as has Mark Deshera against him. you got to use all those pitches. That change up right there to get Nick Swisher to have on that soft line drive to short. Great numbers against the Yankees, considering that division. Pitching with the Tampa Bay Rays is to share. It gets booed loudly. Take strike one. That'll leave an account. To share it coming in hard on a play in the third inning of Friday night's game. Taking out Bobby Wilson. Had to be removed from the game, taken to the hospital. The ankle injury, and of course, the bigger concern, of course, the, the concussion. There's a strike. Well, I got to see Bobby after the game that night. Just wished him well. He certainly was rattled by that collision at the plate. 
In tight, two balls, two strikes. Well, that's a pretty good sequence of pitches against Teixeira. A couple fastballs in the outside corner, then runs it in on the inside corner. That didn't miss by much. Teixeira off to his patented slow start, a 123 average coming into this one with a couple of home runs and eight driven home. Kazmir trying to go a 1-2-3 here in the first. And Teixeira spoils that pitch. Remember that last game, Scott Kazmir, when he had the elevated fastball about 91. Some bad swings. I asked Mike Butcher about that. He said the, at the very end, it's a little giddy up, rising fastball. Not necessarily trying to do that, but it has deceptive angle coming in above the belt. Those are the numbers for that first game of the season for Kazmir in New York. 2 2, just missed in. It's a full count. The game you're talking about, of course, was against the Tigers. But a very good offensive ball club themselves when he pitched into the sixth inning. At seven strikeouts, the big number, the goose egg in the walk column. I was thinking right along with Scott Casimir, change up there. You could see by the swing by Teixeira, he was looking for a fastball. Just missed the inside corner fastball, then a change up that was elevated. But still the speed. Teixeira to have a bad swing at it. Another payoff. Bounced foul on the third base side. Eight pitch at bat thus far for Tex. Gasmer picking up the win against the Tigers in that game. Got charged with two earned runs, but the bullpen just could not. Keep those runs from crossing the plate. And a 3 2. Down low. He walked him. Throws a walk and brings up Alex Rodriguez. Take a look at the Angels Home Depot doing more on defense. Rivera, Hunter, and Abreu from left to right in the outfield. On the infield, it's Wood, Esturas, Kendrick, Morales. And up behind the plate, Mike Napoli getting the start. You see Mike Sosa scores getting the start at shortstop today. So valuable for Mike Sosa. He could play second, third, short. Played all well. Soft hands. Last year played 25 games at short. The guy can do it all for the Angels. Alex at 313. A couple of home runs. 11 runs batted in. Casimir stepping off. Alex just one for five in yesterday's game. Ramiro Pena getting the start at third base. There's a strike at the knees. Alfonso Marquez calling the balls and strikes. Kendry, as he always does, playing out in front of the runner. Count even now, one and one. Angels with the loss yesterday afternoon come in with a nine and ten mark. Just five and eight here at the Big Eight this season. Missing just in two balls and one strike. That was Casimir's slider there. Not a bad break on it, but you want more. Of a downward action. That was more of a sweeping slider for Kazmir. Which has worked on him a ton in between starts as far as getting on top of that slider to have that snap to get downward action. On the ground to short. Go the short way, and there's out number three. Nothing happening for the Yankees in the first time. Kazmir setting the tone. Angels coming up in the bottom of the inning.
As we take a look at the Angels starting nine this afternoon. Meister Sturz leads things off. He's in short Bobby Abreu and right Torrey Hunter at center. But Decky Matsui, the cleanup man. Kendra Morales at first, Juan Rivera and left Howie Kendrick at second. Mike Napoli doing the catching. Brandon Wood, third baseman, rounding out that nine. Those guys take it on. Javier Vasquez, who comes in with a 1-2 and two mark and an 8-27 ERA. Well, he has struggled since his return back to the American League. 0-2 oh, mark in his career against the Angels also. Fastball, 88-92. to 92. Occasionally will go up there to 94 when he throws a four-seam fastball. Curveball, slider, changeup. Loves to use that changeup to finish off left-handed batters, though. Vasquez got the start against the Angels on the 14th of April. Took the loss, giving up four earned runs and five and a third. Got booed a little bit, leaving the mound in New York. He's had good numbers in his career against the Angels, and really good numbers, although limited sample, here at the Big A. No record, a 132 ERA. Lives on the outer half of the plate. Meiser with a 250 average, seven runs batted in. It's two for four yesterday with an RBI. Strike in at the knees. Two for four coming Friday night, not yesterday afternoon. Eric Ibar getting the day off today. Two one on the ground, right back to Vasquez. One away. We take a look at the defense for the Yankees. Marcus Thames gets the start in left field. Curtis Granderson in center. Nick Swisher out in right. On the infield, A Rod and Jeter on the left side. Cano and Teixeira on the right. And Francisco Cervelli doing the catching once again. And when you have a pitcher like Vasquez who lives on the outer half of the plate, the second baseman is going to be used a lot. And Robinson Cano will have that range of his tested during this game to the glove side pretty good backhand not quite as strong so he will get a lot of ground ball action today at second base there's Bobby Abreu three for seven in the series with a couple of doubles Bobby starting to get locked in we saw him have the big game on Friday with two doubles a couple of runs scored the night before had a three hit night That is ripped in the right field, a base hit. Bobby will stop it first as Swisher cuts that ball off. A one-out single for Abreu. When you talk about someone getting locked in, Bobby certainly is that quick hands on the inner half. Vasquez tried to sneak a fastball in the inside corner. Not a bad location in 89, but it is so it's quick hands for Bobby. Threw the ball, centered it up, faced it in the right. So man on, put Vasquez in that stretch position. Torrey Hunter at the plate, his average at a 284. Seven runs batted in, two for seven in the series. And still looking for Torrey just to get that power swing going. He's had some doubles, seven of them. But only one home run so far for Mike Sosha. The one thing that we have seen, though, is that the ball is jumping off his bat. The outs that he's made, even the hits, the doubles that he's picked up, certainly are loud. But as far as the, the loft and driving the ball out of the ballpark, you're right, not quite there. Although the one double he hit the right center field off the top of the fence a couple of nights ago against the Tigers. Yeah, the it was pitch, pretty legit. The pitchers are avoiding going to the inner half against Torrey. They're going away and forcing him to hit the ball to the bigger part of the yard. And, and Mickey's worked with him a lot on that staying back driving it the other way eventually pitchers make mistake on the inner half and that's when you hit it out on the ground a third a rod to Cano for one relay on and it over the Angels get a man on and leave them clear one complete no score
CarMax. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. And by Carl's Jr., Charbroil, Black Angus Beef, Crispy Bacon, and four slices of melted cheese on grilled bread. The new grilled cheese bacon burger, only at Carl's Jr., starting at $2.49. Top of the second from the Big A, no score. Gorgeous afternoon here in Anaheim, Southern California area. Why not? It's the way baseball is meant to be played right here. Outdoors with the sun gleaming down. Great crowd on hand. This is true, perfect SoCal weather. The one and only time the Yankees roll into town. Here the second, it'll be Robinson Cano, Jorge Posada, Marcus Thames to face Scott Casimir. Scott throwing 23 pitches in that first inning, 14 for strikes. Cano takes up and in. Not a bad spot. Guy's nice seven for nine. So you just want to make sure he's uncomfortable with the plate. He's looking out over the plate, looking to see if he can drive the ball to right field. Stay away. Fly balls to left. And that one got him. Joe Girardi is going to come out and check his hitter. Yeah, Joe has a big habit of doing this. I don't know why. I don't think I got him that hard. He warrant people coming out and checking on him. Fastball inside. He's, he's, he's a guy that loves to get his hands through the zone. Got him in the area where generally if you're going to get hit, you want, it's not a bad spot. Fischera looking on because he got hit before the collision at the plate by Irvin Santana. Again, it wasn't that he hit him on purpose. You have to pitch inside against these Yankee hitters. They love to get their arms extended. Posada steps in and Skies went out to straightaway center field. Torrey Hunter back at the track. Gone. A two-run home run. The Yankees strike first. Two-nothing. Posada with his fourth home run of the season. RBI is 10 and 11. Well, he showed that graphic of Posada with some good numbers against Casimir, hitting over 400. Fastball right down the middle. No doubt about it. Posada has good numbers to share. Marcus Thames. Who's at the plate now has had good numbers in his career. 4-12 average against Kazmir. Reserve outfielder for the pinstripers at 462 this year with a home run and one RBI. Jorge getting the day off again today. At least from back behind the plate. Cervelli getting the start as Tens reaches out for one out the left center field. Long run for Torre and Rivera. And this one off the wall. Tens in its second with a double. Ball carrying well today. Well, it's a whole different ball game when you play day games here at the Big A because that was not a bad pitch. It was down just a few inches above the dirt. And Marcus Tens went down and got it. And is carried and carried to left center. And that pitch is almost in the dirt at a change up the boot. So Mike Butcher's out to talk things over. Three batters here in the second, a hit by pitch, a home run, and now a double. Well, if you're Scott Casimir right now, okay, you've given up the two runs, limit the damage right now, because you know you're going to have opportunities to score. Against Vasquez, he's a good pitcher, but he's a guy that lives on the outer half. He will pitch to contact. you got to throw up some zeros, stop the Yankee momentum going right now. Give your offense a chance to be part of the game. Granderson into the plate, the center fielder, 259 with a couple of home runs. Good speed as well, showing bump. Dragging one on the first base side. For a one half flip, nice dig out of the dirt by Kendry Morales. Tough play, too, because Morales kind of committed himself to charging that ball until he saw Casimir veer to his left. 
and they get the out. It was a tough play for Casimir too, because if there's any left hand, you're going to fall towards third base. That's the only play he has to flip it. Henry has a presence not only pick it, but he had the base runner in Granderson who runs extremely well down the line. Comes in to make the play, gets back to the bag, flip, scoop, get the out. And the Angels bringing the infield in. Sacrifice bunt for Granderson, putting Thames over at third base. And Francisco Cervelli at the plate. Cervelli had himself a good game yesterday. A couple of hits. See, this is the difference Joe Girardi managed Yankee Club as compared to Joe Torre. Joe Torre liked multiple run situations, not giving up and out. Girardi from the old school trying to manufacture a run here to give his club a 3 nothing lead here. It's two balls and no strikes on the ninth place hitters. We see the infield drawn in. Five runs batted in for Cervelli on the season, two of which came yesterday afternoon. A little four-game hitting streak going. Good pitch in on the hands. Two balls and a strike. Always a good spot when a man on third RBI situation throw a fastball at the hands. Because you want as a, as a batter at an opportunity to drive in the run, so you're going to be more aggressive than normal. Lays off the outside pitch. It's three balls in a strike. In theory, this is the guy you want. Derek Jeter on deck. Top of that order coming around. Morse the issue trying to get that second out. Exactly. Jeter not easy to double up either. Puts the ball in play. 3-1. In the dirt, it gets past Napoli. Ricochets back. Thames had broken towards home. Heads back to third base. What an odd circumstance there. And Cervelli draws the walk, and all of a sudden the Yankees have runners at first and third with one away at the top of the order coming up. Well, right under, underneath the legs of Napoli coming right back. And if it comes right back to Napoli, they get 10th to third base probably. He showed in the graphic in the opening the walks. That's the key, or lack of walks, has been the, the key for success for the pitching staff for Mike Sosha. There was games in which they've won nine ball games. The starting pitchers, the ERA at two, only five walks. Over 20 in the games they've lost. Two issued already by Kasmir to go with that hit by pitch. Jeter's 0 for 1. Takes a strike. Thames at third base, Cervelli at first. And even with a catcher in Cervelli at first base, who's not prone to running a lot, we've talked about it on Friday, and you mentioned it already. Joe Girardi's team's a little bit different. Would not be surprised with a good contact guy at the plate to see Cervelli going at some point. And it snowballs two strikes. Especially 0 2, he likes to make that action play. The Yankees do first and third. But this is spot now. If you're Scott Casimir, you led the American League in strikeouts in 07. This is the time you need that strikeout. O2 on the ground of third. Going around the horn. Can they turn it? Safe at first. The run scores. It is three nothing Yankees. Pretty good turn, doing everything they could to be able to get this double play, but Jeter's just too quick down the line. Very close play at first. Just got the foot in before the ball went into Morales' glove. Like I said, it's difficult to turn two against Jeter. Jeter picking up his 12th RBI as Thames crosses the play. Two outs now for Nick Swisher. Goes back to that walk by... Casimir to Francisco Cervelli. Different situation with a man at third base, two outs. Not assuming that Jeter would ground over to third base to end the inning, but it changes the dynamic. 
at least the approach as well. I think when you see pitchers walk guys, and I was certainly prone to walk some, some batters myself early in my career, was just the lack of confidence in your stuff. What I mean by that is you're not as aggressive as you should be. When you look at the stuff that Scott Casimir takes you out there, a 99 one mile an hour fastball, a very good change of slider, you should be more aggressive in the zone. We saw that in the first inning, all four guys he faced, first pitch strike. He's got that type of stuff to start believing in it. Swisher out to right center field. Hunter got a good jump on it. Is there. There's out number three. The Yankees strike first. They get three. Two. Courtesy of Fasada. Middle of the second. Three to nothing. New York. At the bottom of the second, it'll be Hideki Matsui, Kenji Morales, Juan Rivera as we take a look at the FoxSportsWest.com poll question. Who's been the most valuable angel for the first three weeks of the season? Matsui, Morales, Kendrick, or Abreu? Just to log on to FoxSportsWest.com. Cast your ballot. We'll have results throughout the show. Even into the postgame show. Perfect. Javier Vasquez gave up a base hit to Bobby Abreu in the first inning. Got a double play ball off the bat of Torrey Hunter. So very quiet. Hideki Matsui launching one out to right field. Playable for Nick Swisher. Just got underneath it. And there is out number one. Now it's time for a Coors Lake cold hard blast. The mail is delivered and bam! Deposited by Kenya Morales. The right field, the two run bomb. Gave the Halos that 6-4 lead in which Brian Fuente saved the day. That was a cold, hard blast. Very appropriate, too. It went out over the going, going, gone Jeff Blue sign out in right field. No question. Segway. You like that? Yep. Kendrick, even 300. He has been red hot. 526 average, two home runs, seven runs batted in over the last five games. In the hole and no balls and a strike. Takes that one inside. It's one and one. That home run on Friday in the eighth inning was the capper of a three-hit night. He was on base all four times. He was hit by a pitch in the third inning. Lays off the off speed. Two balls and a strike. Really all about trying to chip away, trying to get a run here, run there. It's a guy that the Angels saw a lot of in that game in the Bronx. A lot of pitches thrown by Vasquez. Maybe important for the offense to respond. We're down three to one. Came right back and scored three runs after that collision at the plate. Yesterday they fell behind and didn't have any response to the pitching of Andy Pettit. 
And he walks Morales here with one out. Puts a man on here in the second for Juan Rivera. Looking back at that Wednesday afternoon game in the Bronx that Joel Pinheiro defeated Javier Vasquez. The Angels really didn't touch Vasquez for a run until the third inning. Two runs came across. And then it was quiet up until the sixth. The Angels getting two more in that sixth inning before Vasquez was taken out for Alfredo Aceves. Nice job by Cervelli there, and it's one ball, no strikes. Yesterday afternoon for Yoel Pinheiro, those games are going to happen. And it's difficult, too. You can talk about it as a starting pitcher. Whenever you back up against the team you just recently saw and were so good, the game is about adjustments. And I don't think Pinheiro had his best stuff, was elevating a lot of pitches yesterday. But it's still offensively, especially a team like New York, it is difficult to double up again. Yeah, I never like to face a club that close to each other. You, because it gets in your mind, you feel like you have to make adjustments when reality is you got to let them make the adjustment you first before you do so. Use some all-speed pitches because this sinker in New York was virtually unhittable. He could have almost do nothing but fastball, fastball, fastball. But the Yankees made the adjustment. Then Andy Pettit was this, I mean, the way he's throwing the ball early in this year, looks like he's 25 again. Cut fastball has been great for him. Outside, three balls and no strikes. Seven straight wide ones for Javier Vasquez. Cervelli's going to go out and have a little conversation. Juan Rivera loves to swing 3-0. It's one of those spots, though, unless it's right down the middle in which you know you can hit the ball for at least an extra base, you might want to take it. Put the pressure back on Vasquez. If he walks a couple guys, you're one swing away from a tie game. Got to be in that happy zone. Takes inside, ball four. Back-to-back -back walks given up by Javier Vasquez. The Angels have two on with one out. And Howie Kendrick coming up now as we take a look at the U.S. Marines leaders of the game. Of that, only active pitcher with 10 or more wins, 150 or more strikeouts, and 30 or more starts in each of the last nine seasons. We'll go back to consistency. That's why, even though he's been with a number of clubs via the trader free agent market, he's a guy that you can count on innings and starts. So valuable for your bullpen. People continue to put a lot of emphasis on he's an innings eater. He may have an ERA of five. Or even above that, but he's an innings eater. As if that's the that's the marketing tool to, to sell it to the fans and to everyone around baseball. That is a, it's definitely a, a phrase that gets you a lot of money because you're a guy that they can rest the bullpen on those other days when other starters may not be giving you those innings. Perfect for a manager. You can count on okay, Vasquez is in the game. He's going to start every fifth day and he's going to give me seven innings. Kendrick takes a questionable strike on the outside corner. Howie at 290 with the home run. Eight runs batted in. Howie's been going really good until the Yankees roll into town. 0 for 7 in this series. Lays off the breaking pitch. Well, I really like what Howie's been doing so far this season, tracking the breaking pitch. Hey, you're not going to hit a great slider or curveball. You, you get the, the bad ones, the hangers over the plate, but when you swing at pitches, pitches, that's when you see the batting average go down low. Morales in second, Rivera at first. One out here in the second. And that fastball's fouled back. The bat goes flying into the seats. See that off in the back of the left field stands and the ball went in the right field stands. Coverage. Well, you can see how far the bat went and the ball went just about the same area of the right field side. Fortunately enough, it didn't seem to hit anybody, but they got able to get the souvenir. Look how far the share is playing off the first base. 
obviously the reputation of how he'd be able to go the other way, and he's and Vasquez staying on the outside corner. Breaking ball's popped up, shallow right, long run in for Nick Swisher. He's there. Two outs. So it'll be up to Mike Napoli here with two outs and two on to try to get a, a run across for the Angels. One for five in the series. Well, at some point, you're going to see Mike Napoli start driving the ball, particularly well to right center field. He can carry a club with that type of power. Very streaky hitter. Starting to see more and more pitches. He's due for one of those hot streaks. Well, considering the sporadic start that he had to the season with Jeff Mathis getting the bulk of the duties behind the plate. He fouls one straight back. You can understand why as good a spring as he had, because he was tremendous, especially with the power numbers and the RBIs. Well, you miss a couple of game at bats. Doesn't matter how much extra BP you take, but that live action to kind of get you back into the groove. That timing, the rhythm for a hitter. The more pitches to see, the better chance you are to be able to get those mistakes when a pitcher makes one. Vasquez made a mistake there. He fouled the straight back. Check the swing. Pickoff attempt to second. It back safely with Morales. Pazo Marquez said he went around, so it's no balls, two strikes. Really almost had him. That quick release they got away from him a bit. Andrew trying to get that good secondary lead to be able to score on a base hit. No balls, two strikes, two outs. 17 pitch inning thus far for Vasquez. One, two, count now, and again, another conversation. Another breaking pitch. More than likely here again, he'll throw another slider, see if he can get Napoli to swing through this off the corner. Again, a lot of times you throw enough sliders, you're going to hang one of them. Generally, you don't get that baseball back. He truly has not snapped one off that would give the hitters some pause until that one. Right back to Vasquez. There's out number three. Back to back walks. The Angels can't do anything with them. Two of the books. Yankees up three nothing.
Rodriguez and Cano against Scott Casimir. To share Drew Walk in his first inning played appearance, an official at bat for him. Two walks in the inning, or probably two walks in the game for Casimir. Two walks in the inning for Vasquez in the second, but Angels just could not capitalize on it. Two balls and no strikes. Big inning for Scott Casimir to put up a zero. Has to keep the, key, the team in the game early on here. The sheriff drilling one out the left field, a mile high. Juan Rivera drifting back with the shades down. Makes the catch. There is out number one. As we take a look at our Farmers Insurance true stories of the game. Only four players in Major League Baseball history have 2,000 hits, 500 or more doubles, 250 or more home runs, 350 or more stolen bases, and 1,000 or more walks. Bonds, Vigio, Henderson, and Willie Mays. A couple of guys that on the verge, though, Bobby Abreu and Alex Rodriguez as he steps in. That's filling up the old lineup card in it with all kinds of numbers, big numbers. Visit Farmers.com today to hear more true stories from Farmers customers and to find a SoCal agent near you. As we take a look at the overall numbers. Hits, doubles, home runs, stolen bases. Both of them get extremely close. Both patient at the plate, too. Look at the number of walks both of them have. One ball, one strike count on the Yankee third baseman who rolled into the inning, inning fielder's choice in the first, so he's 0 for 1. Good off speed pitch down and away and it's one and two real good arm action on that change up stayed on top circle change up Off the outside corner perfect pitch Try to go back to that circle change Over pronated if you will Exactly forced it to it. You got to trust the grip Two two got him good pitch down and in down goes Rodriguez. There's out number two. And that'll bring up Robinson Cano Went back to back to back change ups Stayed on top Great action 79 miles an hour Hey again, I'd like to thank our friends at Aramark. They dropped off some major league dogs section 259 Got the New York dog the little Coney Island action with some chili cheese and onions on it Mm -mm -mm. The Chicago dog. It's got peppers. Is that relish? Relish? Man. Let's see. What's the other one we got here? Ooh. The Ooh. angel dog that's bacon wrapped. We'll see you in about an inning or two. Yeah, huh? I'll be back in about the <laughs> section 259 Major League Dogs. Just one of any number of fantastic food items available here at the Big A. The great new food here at the Big A. Ball two strikes with big lines everywhere. Clyde Wright was very happy that was pumping up his barbecue Friday. I love food at the ballpark. There's the big league dogs right there. Well, fellas can find it. Good job. There's the Panda Express. A number of our guys like to visit that for the games. Guys in the truck? Yep. Equal opportunity crushers. <laughs> the crusher. Mm. Food everywhere here at the Big A. 2-2 to Cano. Got him. A 1-2-3 inning for Scott Kasner, including two strikeouts. Middle of the third. Yankees still up.
Angel fans, except for when the Yankees come into town, so they like to throw out their Yankee gear. But they're willing to change back to go to the Angels once the Angels score four or five in this inning. That is tired. How convenient. Well, they're ready to take off their jersey as soon as the Angels score. They're, they're Yankee fans at times. What do you expect? You need that reversible jersey, though. Yeah. Down 3 nothing. Brandon Wood leads things off here in the third. Base knock to left field. In yesterday's game, a 102 average. Still looking for that first extra base hit, first RBI of the season. Quickly at no balls and two strikes. 9 1 and 2 do up for the Halos here in the third. The stir is to follow, then Bobby Abreu. Vasquez, no strikeouts, couple of walks. Just going back to that second inning, not to beleaguer a point, but you get a guy like Vasquez who's scuffling to throw strikes, back to back walks, and falls behind on Howie Kendrick. Got to take advantage of it. Absolutely. The one two. Breaking balls, top foul. It's going to find its place in the seats. Listen, when you're a pitcher on the mound and you've walked a couple guys, you're, you're trying to find that good arm slot to be able to throw a strike in the zone. So more, about, more likely you're going to try to aim the pitch. So that's the pitch you can drive. If it's down the middle of the plate, the mechanics aren't there, your confidence is going away. Especially if you're Vasquez, who had a, has had a tough time so far coming back to the Yankees with an ERA over eight coming into the game in three starts. Two balls, two strikes. Of course, this being the second stint for Vasquez in pinstripes. The first didn't work out so well. Coming over this offseason, a trade with the Atlanta Braves for Melky Cabrera. Fouls that fastball back. Count remains at two and two. Vasquez spent one season in New York back in 04. It was 14 and 10 with a 491 ERA. There's out number one. First strikeout for Vaxes. Vasquez, I should say, brings up Meister Sturz. Hey, the next Friends and Family Fun Pack game takes place this Tuesday as the Angels host the Cleveland Indians. Enjoy four game tickets, four hot dogs, and four soft drinks for just $44. Purchase your Family Fun Pack today at angelsbaseball.com. Meister to come back here to Vasquez. First inning, so he's 0 for 1. Getting to start at shortstop, lead off spot. Eric Ibar taking the day off. It's been a rough week with Eric Ibar, you know, and to host fans on his bobblehead giveaway day. Corey had to get a day off, too. It's a game in which Reggie Willis got the start out in center field. Oh, a couple of great plays, too, by Reggie. Going to his right end to his left. Yeah, Mike Soch is very good at picking the right day to give his regulars a day off. We energize the batteries. One one from Vasquez. Breaking ball is in there. One and two. A slow breaking ball. There's Reggie. Boy, there were two outstanding plays. See how fast he is. You saw him for a minute and he's gone. Well, that's why you know he can cover that ground in center. Get out of the way of the camera in a second. Crazy fast. They like flash. The phantom, some would call it. <laughs> Here's a 2 2. A little foul. Boy, Basket, very deliberate. This is having the tempo of this game. Dragging out there. 
you know, the mindset is that you, you just don't have the confidence in your stuff. And he's got, again, he's got a good fastball. I mean, there was times last year with Atlanta, he was rushing up there 94, 95 miles an hour. A very good curveball and a slider combination. Two shot foul. It's two balls, two strikes. Always thought as a pitcher, if you're aggressive on the mound, the opponent sitting there dug us. Man, this guy has confidence in himself. The more time you take in between pitches, the more you feel you have a chance against him in the batter's box or in the on deck circle into that dugout. Well, heads up on the first base dugout side. Bobby Thompson and Mick Kelleher, the coach, is leaning up there. Mick on the left. Very fortunate to have that screen. <laughs> you better believe it. Be singing soprano. <laughs> Good little battle here for my sisters. Eight pitch at bat thus far for the Angel shortstop. He likes to go that change up. He's got two strikes on left handed batters or that slow curveball on the outside corner. Oh, curveball once again. Foul. The thing is, because of the speed of that curveball, you still have a chance of making that adjustment as a hitter. It's good break to it, but when it's slow like that, it's completely different than A.J. Burnett, who has a good curveball, but it's a hard curveball. A slower one, you can still have that time to make adjustments at the plate. And what's a fastball on the outside corner? Outside, full count. Payoff pitch. Foul ball. I've seen a lot of pitches eventually going to make a mistake. It was it Al Spur was with the Dodgers, saw about 20 pitches one game, and then finally got a pitch out over the plate and hit a home run with it. The more you see, the better opportunity you have to drive the ball, because the pitcher is going to make some type of mistake when you throw that many pitches to one particular batter. He went around the breaking ball. There's out number two. Back to back strikeouts for Vasquez, although this one took 13 pitches. Brings up Bobby Abreu. Bobby had a single in the right field in the first inning, so he's one for one. When this homestand started on Monday against the Tigers, batting 231. A good week that he's had, taking his batting average north of 270. Javier Vasquez, deliberate, as perhaps even Steve Traxel at one time. Mike Hargrove was the human rain delay at the plate. Steve Traxel was the guy out on the mound. Hargrove was unbelievable how much time he took in between every pitch. 
no yelling going on, right? Between no. The pitcher and the hitter at that time? Never. Nothing like get back in the box. Ray rolling now and found. It's two balls, two strikes. You know me well enough by now. I have zero patience either. So, so when a guy takes a month to get back in there for every pitch, Tennessee had their adrenaline rushing a little bit. Vasquez trying to do what Casimir did in the top of the inning. Retire the side in order. He's already got the two strikeouts like Casimir did. Bobby drilling with the deep right field. Forget about this one. Long gone. A big fly for Bobby Gray. The Angels get on the board. They trail it three to one. Well, that's two great at bats already in the game for Bobby Ray, who continues to hit Bobby Vasquez so well. Now, 10 career big flies against him. That had some serious distance. The replay shows a hanging breaking pitch. Like I said those hanging sliders never quite stay in the yard. Some sound and some distance. Bobby loving it, his third home run of the season, his 10th RBI, a two for two game thus far. How about Francisco Cervelli's reaction? Oh. <laughs> I've been there before. I, there, there are the ones you don't even want to look back if you're a pitcher because you know that's way out of here. Nick, you were ready to make the play on that foul ball. Well, it was coming towards Norm. I had to take care of it. I don't blame you. That's right. Protect the orb. Let it get me, right? Perfect. I'm one man, Gooby. <laughs> <laughs> they got him on the breaking ball. Down he goes. So, three strikeouts for Vasquez, but Bobby Abreu gets the Angels on the board with his third home run of the year. Yankees up 3-1. to one. That's a lot of home runs against one pitcher. Ten. It's one more than nine, one less than 11. That's pretty good. Yeah. Brought to you by One West Bank, one person at a time. You go to college for that? I did. Briefly. <laughs> Rashada takes upstairs for ball one. Ten home runs and 76 official at bats. I mean, that's a lot of home runs. Have you ever Here's had anybody hit? Hit you like that as far as the power numbers are concerned? Ken Griffey Jr., I think Fred McGriff, Jose Kitsaker, about four home runs, but not ten. It's a lot. 
you know, if you maybe if you had 120 to 150 at bats against the pitcher, but only 76. Think about walking them every time. <laughs> Casper's fallen behind at two balls and no strikes. Posada homered. The first pitch fastball in the second inning. And the Yankees up 2 0. Going the opposite way and a brave. Got a good jump to his left. One out. Time now for the AT&T trivia question. This afternoon. It is since 1976. Derek Jeter is one of six Yankee captains. Who are the other five? Thurman Munson. Since 1976, There's five other captains since, since 1976. Se really, Thurman Munson's got to be one of them. Absolutely, Don Mattingly. Don Mattingly, Donnie Baseball. I didn't think they messed around with the C too often there in New York. Yeah, that's a good one. Two balls and no strikes on Marcus Towns. Did they ever have co-captains? I'm sure they never gave that C to any pitcher. But for me, I would give one to, well, you can't do it now because Derek Jeter, but Rivera, the closer, in the best postseason pitcher the game has ever seen. Since 76, so you know there's a couple of Billy Martin stints in there, so Billy was known to do some some crazy things. That pitch missed down low. Thames thought it was a strike, but he'll take his walk. Usually when you see a hitter stick around home plate on a 3-0 pitch, you figure he's going to get the obligatory strike call. Well, generally it's in the neighborhood 3-0 pitch, but that was in the strike zone. <laughs> you always hear that. When you're close 3-0, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt, but that was actually a strike down the middle at the knees. So Granderson's been on, or pardon me, Thames has been on twice with the double now to walk. Granderson had the sack bunt in the second inning, so no official AB for him. Scott misses down low. 63 pitches for Scott Casimir thus far, 33 for strikes, 30 balls. That's the ratio that he was looking forward to. Three walks and two strikeouts. There's strike. Dave Winfield, maybe a captain? Well, if it was up to George Steinbrenner, I don't know about that. He's certainly, in my opinion, one of the best players the game has ever seen. Good pitch down and away, and it's one ball, two strikes. And absolutely the scariest one at the plate. That big and strong with unbelievable play coverage. One, two, and he got him. Granderson susceptible to the strikeout. Goes down swinging for out number two. Casimir picks up his third punch out of the afternoon. Good sequence, too. Here you see the fastball on the outer half at 89 miles an hour. The reason why he was late was because that pitch before was a perfect slider. So he had to be looking away, possibly for the breaking pitch. But you can't do that as a hitter. You can never look for an all-speed pitch. you got to look fastball and make adjustments on the secondary pitches. First ball swinging is Francisco Cervelli. Howie Kendrick. The sunglasses on. Makes the catch. Comes out number three. Yankees go down quietly here in the fourth, but they still lead it.
The only guys I could think of. Got to get a pitcher in there somehow, some way. Ronnie Guidry. Yes, Gator. Talk about a nasty slider. Louisiana Lightning. Yeah, the only pitcher I kept coming back to was, like you said, Mariano Rivera. But you're not going to be able to take the C away from Derek Jeter, though. How about that core of four guys that's been together for a long time for the Yankees? Pettit, Rivera, Jeter, and of course, Rivera and Basada. These guys have just been dominant for such a long period of time, and even last year in the postseason. Here in the fourth, the Angels set up Matsui Morales and Rivera. Matsui skied one out to right field, leading off the second inning. He's 0 for 1. 57 pitches thrown by Vasquez thus far. The 58th is in there for a strike. Three strikeouts, two walks for Javier Vasquez. Interesting line to say the least. He's allowed just two hits. Both to Bobby Abreu, a single and a home run. They had a relatively easy first inning. Got Matsui to sky one out in the second. Lost his control completely, walking Morales and Rivera. But then got Kendrick and Napoli. And then all of a sudden in the third inning comes back in. Strikeout, strikeout, home run, and strikeout. Inside, three balls and a strike. And even with a three-run lead, three-one lead here for Vasquez and a three-one count, doesn't mean he's going to throw a fastball. He's throwing a lot of off-speed pitches. And considering the way we've seen the ball carry, at least off the bats of Posada and Marcus Thames, don't want to make too many mistakes. Here's a three-one. Lays off, but it's a strike. Look down and in. Full count. 3-1 slider. The leadoff batter of the inning. Well, that tells you if you're on the bench the Angels, this guy doesn't believe that much in his fastball to, to get it by you. He's going to try to spot it on the outer half. you got to look out over the plate. Here's the payoff pitch. And that is out to center field. Granderson flipping the shades down. One out. Angel fans, vote now for your favorite Angel to play in the 2010 All-Star Game here at the Big A. Walk on to angelsbaseball.com and vote for Torrey Hunter, Bobby Abreu, Hideki Matsui, and the rest of your favorite Halos. Select the starting lineups for the 2010 All-Star Game and be part of one of the greatest traditions in Major League Baseball. The All-Star Game in baseball is the best, most competitive of all the sports. And nowadays, with all the festivities surrounding it, the you got Fan Fest that goes on, what, a couple days before everything starts on Sunday. you got the Futures game. Celebrity home run derby. Softball game, too. Celebrity softball game. The red carpet event, which I think I've seen you on there a couple times on the red carpet. <laughs> what, cleaning it? Perhaps, as Morales rips one to right. He's on board for the second time today. Well, Angel fans, it's got to start going out there and vote for Kenny Morales. When you think about the numbers he put up last year, an MVP candidate, sort off a little slow, but now the batting average over 300, driving the ball well, key hits too, key home runs. Including that two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth to give the Angels that lead and the victory. Game one of the series. Rivera drill walk himself in the second, so no at bat for him. It's fouled straight back and over our heads. No balls and a strike. Yankees with three runs on two hits. Both hits coming back in the second. That was the home run by Posada, that double by Dems. Back to back at bats. The Angels with a run on three hits. 
Up and in to Rivera and actually got him. A hit by pitch puts runners at first and second again with one out. And Howie Kendrick with an opportunity to do something. Similar situation last time, Howie came up first and second with one out. Going up and in, this for show. Fastball inside, but this time gets Juan Rivera, who's been hit a number of times already. Three already this week. None more painful than the one he took in the rib cage. Here's Howie 0 for 1 with a fly ball to right. Huge for the Angels here in the fourth inning to try to get one across at least. Continue to chip away against Javi Vasquez. And certainly, as we've talked about, the tempo of the ball game itself a lot different than yesterday afternoon's game between Pettit and Pinheiro. And Vasquez throwing a lot of all speed pitch. It, it's a huge gap in left center field, would easily score two runs if. How he gets pitch out over the plate on the outside corner. And what a contrast in styles, too, between Javier Vasquez and Yuel Pinheiro. Pinheiro, the ultimate in pitch to contact. Vasquez, the complete opposite, pitch to the corners and away from contact. Surprising, too, with the type of stuff that Vasquez has. Mm -hmm. Two balls and a strike. Well, I think the key is against him. He, he's got to be patient. Bring him into the middle part of the plate if you can. Otherwise, he'll walk by him. He's got to be too aggressive against him. Ripped into left field, a base hit. Morales is going to be waved home. The throw from Marcus Tams is cut off, and the Angels get on the board here in the fourth inning. An RBI single by Kendrick. Makes it a one-run deficit, three to two Yankees. Boy, you would think in that spot there, Dino Evil, very aggressive with one out sending. Marcus Tim didn't look like he charged that ball real well, so he took advantage of. You see Dino studying him. Ground ball, base hit here for Howie. Saw that he wasn't charging it well. See how relaxed he came in on it. And he took a chance. I'll tell you what, Kenry might not have been sliding at home plate there either. Full head of steam. No, he wasn't going to slide. No. <laughs> there, might have been, <laughs> there, was, there could have been a pretty good collision out. He's a big, strong kid. Here's Mike Napoli. Three to two Yankees here in the fourth. And just like you talked about, letting Vasquez come to you. He's a guy that pitches to the corners. Let him come to you. Let him make a mistake on the inside part of the plate. Tried to sneak that fastball in on Kendrick, and he turned it into left field. A mistake because he's so used to trying to go out there. He was trying to go out, believe it or not, and ran back over the plate. You stayed out there long enough, you're going to make mistakes. Napoli hit one back to Vasquez, so he's over one. There's that hanging breaking ball. Two balls and no strikes. Wait, look where Savelli's setting up and how that ball ran at 89, right over the inside part and off the corner. How he's so quick. So much success against the Yankees throughout his career. Rivera at second, Kendrick at first, one out. A single by Kendrick Morales, getting a little rally going. 2 0. 2 and 1. 2 0 slider, he's not giving in. Kind of like a right handed version of a Tom Glavin, a guy that. When he's ahead or behind in the count, will not give in with the fastball in that spot. Do him a slider, especially with the power that Mike Napoli has. Three balls and a strike. Vasquez thought he had it, so did Cervelli. And it goes back to that whole pitching backwards theory. 2 0, breaking ball 2 1. Puts it right in the hitter's head. Oh, he's going to come back with another breaking ball. And all of a sudden, boom, there's that sneaky fastball. And if it's at the knees, he's got Napoli locked up. You wonder if he did that in the National League, though, identify more of a hit-and-run type league as compared to an offensive league in the American League. 
Another breaking pitch, 3 1. Segale Vasquez talking over the strategy and a full count now with one away. More than likely, the base runners be going. If you're Juan Rivera, you got to make sure that Vasquez is going home. This is the time we have that spin move to second base. Juan trying to get a big lead at second. Runners don't go. The breaking ball's inside ball four. They are loaded up for Brandon Wood. Boy, 3-2 count. A little more of a slide step. Backed up on the breaking pitch. Just missed the inside corner. Again, you're not going to get the borderline pitches when you've been all over the place around the strike zone. Just human nature for a home plate umpire not going to give you that pitch. Dave Especially Island, they want you to be aggressive. Pitching coach is out to the visit. Brandon Wood steps up over 0 for 1. With a strikeout, Boone Logan, first man up. Rivera at third. Kendrick at second, Mike Napoli at first. Oh for 11 with four strikeouts in his career with the bases loaded. Ripped into left field, sinking, and it's on the ground. Rivera scores. Howie Kendrick is coming home. He'll score in at second as Brandon Ward. Two RBI single, Angels up four to three. But what I like about that for Brandon, he was aggressive. It was a mistake made once again by Javier Vasquez up in the zone. Don't let those pitches go by. Because then if you fall behind in the count, then they're going to make their pitcher's pitches against you. Aggressive. On the replay shows a hanger. Like quick hands, too. Marcus Timms unable to make the play. Fortunately, he was able to get at least some leather on it. Otherwise, all three runs would score. First RBIs of the year for Brandon Wood. Napoli ends up at third base. Here's Meister Asturis. A 4-3 Angel lead here in the fourth. On the ground on the right side. This will score another run as Cano's got it. It is 5-3 Angels. All you want to do if you're Meister right there, they got the infield playing back, they're giving you a run, they're, they got the confidence in their offense, and they're going to score. So put the ball in play, get that run across. Yes, you want to base it, but the reality is you get a two run lead now by putting that ball in play. And that's going to be it for Javier Vasquez, who probably is not very happy with the situation. Joe Girardi, a guy that likes to play matchups, going to the bullpen early. And he'll be bringing on Boone Logan. Now, considering Bobby Braves two for two, including a home run, perhaps not a bad choice. A pitching change here at the Big A. Halos with four runs already in. They are up five to three.
chatting it up with the other third baseman, Alex Rodriguez. Big two RBI double. They're giving Brandon Wood a double. A little home cooking there. We'll take it. That's his first extra base here of the season. Four runs in for the Halos here in the fourth. They've got a five to three lead as Boone Logan takes over for Javier Vasquez, which is kind of a curious situation, Mark. I know we were talking about an off air, but if you're Javier Vasquez, granted, you've given up four runs here, but you've done it on five hits. You've got three strikeouts and three walks. And I know Bobby Abreu's coming to the plate, but as a veteran pitcher, are you not a little chapped at the fact you're being taken out of this ball game, considering you could put Abreu on at first base and take your chance with Torrey Hunter? That's the exact point. You can pitch around Bobby Abreu. Bobby has great success against Vasquez. Ten career home runs. But you have an open base, and Torrey Hunter has not seen the ball well against him. So, yeah, you would be upset. You want that opportunity to battle your way through, give your team a chance. But Joe Girardi just felt that he was not aggressive enough around the strike zone. That's why he probably made that decision, but I certainly wouldn't be happy. Three and two-thirds this afternoon for Javier Vasquez, his shortest outing of the season. His other three hit pitch into the sixth inning. Yeah! And that is lined right to Derek Jeter for the third out of the inning, but the Halos score four runs. They do it on three hits, including that big two RBI double by Brandon Wood. Four complete from the Big A in Anaheim and the Angels leading the pinstripers in the rubber game of the series by the score of 5-3. Two frames in the third and the fourth with three strikeouts and a walk. This is where you need that shutdown inning for sure. Keep the momentum on your side. Four innings, two hits. Mention the strikeouts and the walks. Those three runs coming in the second inning. This is a soft liner. Howie Kendrick to his left. He's got it. There's out number one. Good read on that ball by Howie. Change up. Outer half of the plate. Read it well. Inside out swing. Jeter, such a good compact swing that Jeter has, but Howie makes a great play. Key first out. Jeter's now 0 for 3, but did have an RBI in the second with that fielder's choice. Here's Nick Swisher now. Just to finish up the line on Javier Vasquez, three and two thirds, three strikeouts, three walks, five runs all earned on five hits, including a home run. Like to see that still sitting in the dugout.
Jasmine falling behind immediately on Swisher. Two balls and no strikes. Nick came in batting 236 and he's over two today. Swisher wondering where that pitch was. 2 0 change up on him. In tight, three balls and a strike. Scott getting ready to throw his 74th pitch of the afternoon. It's on the corner. Swisher, just like he did on that 2 0 pitch, thought it was a ball. Never a good idea to run down the line until you hear it's either a ball or strike. And that ball was just off the outside corner. But if you're Swisher right now, anything close to the zone, you better, better be, be swinging. swinging. No doubt. I mean, Swisher sold it so well that David Courtney, our PA announcer here, even announced Mark to share. <laughs> that was pulled foul. I mean, it's one thing to take a step, you know, one step up the line. When you start to jog. Well, there's been some veteran umpires behind a play like a Ken Kaiser who's now retired from it. If you did that, the ball could fall out of your hands and it's a strike. 3 2. Fouled off to the right. Just like if you're a pitcher, you question where the pitch is. You make a sign like is it high or low, and all of a sudden, the strike zone becomes a breadbasket. If you're lucky. In the dirt, ball four. That'll bring up to share now. Four walks on the afternoon for Kashmir. To go with the three strikeouts. And Scott got started off really good as far as throwing first pitch strikes. Eight of the first ten batters he faced through first pitch strike, but since then just two of ten falling behind. There's a fastball fouled straight back. DeGero walking a fly ball to left field. Share with that uppercut swing doesn't hit many ground balls, but if this is the time Casimir to get a pitch on the outside corner and down, get a ground ball double play, it'd be a perfect timing. Foul back to the right. No balls, two strikes now to Shara. A short lead over at first for Swishers. That pitch is down and in. A contrast of hitters between Teixeira and, and, and Alex Rodriguez. Shara, back leg hitter. I mean by that the balance goes to the back leg. That's where he generates his power. A rod on the other hand goes to the front leg and goes through the ball to drive it. That's where you'll get more top spin type of hits from Mark this year than you would for Alex Rodriguez who gets that the back spin on the ball and the carry especially out the right center field. Two, two full count so one thing you can't do with the Yankee hitters is work deep counts fall behind they're patient you don't swing a lot of pitches out of the zone so you've got to be aggressive rip to left Rivera frozen in his track makes the catch they're down number two And look, another off-speed pitch, elevated. Well, fortunate enough because of that uppercut swing, it was up in the zone. That's why he just missed it. Down a little bit, that might have been trouble. That's two straight at bats for Mark Teixeira, where he's looked awfully comfortable and making solid contact from the right side. Here's Alex Rodriguez. Swisher still at first. One and zero. Alex rolled into a fielder's choice in the first, struck out in the third, so he's 0 for 2.
Nashville late on that fastball. Evens the count. And a lot of all speed pitches by Casimir in this inning. 91 on the fastball gets by A Rod. Into center field. Here comes Torrey Hunter. A little sinking liner makes the basket catch for the third out. Nothing happening for the Yankees. Middle of the fifth. Torrey Hunter set the lead things off with the Halos up 5 to 3. out loud out Bobby Abreu lining out to Derek Jeter closing the book on Javier Vasquez Torrey's 0 for 2 double play ball at a strikeout get a little different look for Torrey now against the left-hander Logan coming up to the Yankees with Chan Ho Park going on the disabled list. And his Yankee debut on Tuesday against Oakland when hitting in the third. Came along with Javier Vasquez in that trade for Melky Cabrera from Atlanta. With a lot of pitches off that outside corner throughout the game. Two one. Two and two now. Alfredo Aceves, the right hander, is up and loosening now. And he got him on the breaking pitch. There's out number one. Pretty good spot on that slider. Uh, Logan down and in. Good break against Torrey Hunter. Here's a Decky Matsui who is 0 for 2. A couple of fly balls out to right and center. Great camera angle right there. A little different perspective. Good fastball for a strike at its own one. Logan scuffled last year in the bullpen for Atlanta. The 519 ERA, 20 relief appearances. He's always had a pretty good arm, though. Life on the fastball, formerly of the Tigers organization. 
And when you can throw a fastball from the left side at 93 to 94 and then have a slider like that, you should be successful. Good deception. Hides the ball well. Right through the fastball there, and it's one and two. I mentioned the Tigers, actually the White Sox organization. And it's still just 25 years of age. You know, the media guys are good for a lot of information. Happened to look up Boone Logan here as we were talking just to correct myself on the Tiger White Sox thing. Boone Logan, personal, was selected to the San Antonio All-Star team at O'Connor High School. Dot, dot, dot. That's who he fouls that one off. Lost a pregame on-field cow milking contest to the Angels' Brandon Wood on May 4, 2007 at Angel Stadium. That's the information that's vital. Gooby, I, I don't have anything else for the rest of the game. I, I'm going to leave on a high note. That's about as good as information as you can find. I'm turning it over. <laughs> out to shallow left field. Marcus Thames over to his right in. Makes a catch. There's out number two. It's like that master car commercial. That's just priceless. It is. And assuming the score holds and Brandon Wood happens to become a uh, post-game interview. One of the number of segments that you'll be covering in the post-game. So I'm looking forward to. You can ask him about it. <laughs> Here's Kendry Morales. Two outs, nobody on. Kendry a walk and a single. He started the rally in the fourth. No balls and a strike on the Angel first baseman. Well, that is a great view. In the right field. You can see how the pitch comes in there, the approach at the plate. Plus, you see how fast it comes in there at 93. Good hitters count here for Kendra Morales with two balls on his strike, trying to keep the inning alive for Juan Rivera. And that is out to shallow center field. And that's going to get down for a base hit. When you're going good, everything falls for him. He's been on base all three times in this one with a walk and now two singles. And here comes Rivera. Once again, that's why you see why Kendra Morales should be considered for that also. That's a perfect pitch. Your pitcher, you execute that spot. You should get an out, but not against Kenny Morales. He fights it in the center field for a base hit. So Boone Logan, good enough to face Kenji Morales, but not good enough to face Juan Rivera. Pitching change for the Yankees. It is 5-3 Halos here in the fifth.
the fifth, the U.S. Bank Angels Go Beyond program honors local youth who have made a positive influence in their communities. To participate, a child must be nominated by their friends, family, teachers, or parents. The winners will be invited to an Angels Stadium home game and honored on the field during a pregame ceremony and take the field with the Angels players. To nominate or for more information, visit angelsbaseball.com. Alfredo Seves comes on in relief of Boone Logan. And he'll face Juan Rivera with two outs and a man at first. Seves so far with a 1-0 mark an ERA at 9 in four innings pitched three games. The guy that has a decent fastball, 88-92, to 92, and he cuts the fastball, but his best pitch is changeup. Juan Rivera in this one has walked and been hit by a pitch, and he's also scored a run. So no AVs for, for Juan in this one, but on base twice. He'll take a fastball in for a strike. Well, Savis has a very good changeup, good arm speed with it also. Not afraid to throw it to a right-handed batter or a lefty. Gendry with a very short lead at first. On the outside corner, 0 and 2. So Seb is coming off a season in which he went 10 and 1, leading the big leagues in wins as a reliever. Signed out of Mexicans, Mexico's Winter League, the Mexican Winter Leagues. Pitched down there from 02 to 07. Neo 2 on the ground toward third. And Alex has got it. They go to Cano and force Al Morales. Nothing happening for the Angels here in the fifth. Five of the books, Angels up five to three. You talk about a heated rivalry. That was your Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. That's my type of freeze cam. I like that. A little belly to belly. Yep. Cano, John don't Sterling. you know? Yes, indeed. Speaking of Robbie Cano, he leads things off here in the sixth inning. Five to three Angels. Kazmir, three strikeouts, four walks thus far. 
He'll face Cano, Passana, Thames in the Yankee half of the sixth. Check out that deal. That's a good look. <laughs> That's even better. All in the family. Dedication. Cano out to right field. It's a one run lead for the Angels, five to four. Again, the inner half of the plate against Cano. So quick. So you force him to go the other way if he can. Still has good pop to left center field, but a bigger part of the ballpark. It's fifth home run of the season. What a series he's had. Mislocation on that breaking pitch. See what happens. That hanging slider once again. Cano's fifth home run of the year, RBI number 14. 5 4 Angels now. Here's Posada. The home run against Casimir. Back into second. Angels have action going in their bullpen. There's a the strike. Takes the Bolgers up and loosen them. And in a hurry. Casimir, 91 pitches. Ratio not where you'd like it. 50 strikes, 41 balls. But still with that five to four lead. Posada dribbling one over to third. Brandon Wood has some time with Posada. There's out number one. Good off speed pitch there. Well, Posada's retired for the first down. That'll bring up Marcus Thames. That will be the last batter for Scott Casimir. Get him out right now. Jason Bolger's ready to go. Especially with his pitch count north of 90. At least with an opportunity to pick up a W. I think that's the right move for Mike Sosha at that particular point. Because bolger has got overpowering stuff when he's in the strike zone himself. Game by Scott Casimir. He battled pretty well. Has some good change-ups. Sliders. Pitching change here at the Big A. Angels up by a run. The four Scott Casimir done now after five and a third. Three strikeouts, four walks, four runs all earned. He gave up three hits, two of which left the building. The home run of Posada and the home run by Robinson Cano, but still in position to pick up his second win of the year. Jason Bulger's eighth game. ERA over eight, but last couple times up more aggressive with his fastball. He can throw the fastball 93 94, very good curveball. 
So has a solid change up and a slider too. Well with Bolger in the game Joe Girardi counters and brings on Brett Gardner to pinch it for Marcus Thames. Gardner will take over out in left field. Thames finishes the afternoon with a double a run scored and a walk. First pitch is in there for a strike. Gardner, terrific speed. As he takes down low, and it's one ball, one strike now. It comes in batting 340. A double, a triple, five runs batted in. He got that triple yesterday. In one down into the right field corner. Ended up going three for five in yesterday's game. Two balls and a strike. Good little battle for Bolger. Gardner 11 for his last 24. Late on that fastball. It's two and two now. Went after that slow curveball that looked to be in the strike zone. A fastball at 92 by Jason Bolger. Gardner late on that one. That type of speed that Gardner has, you want to make sure you keep the ball down, make him hit his way on a ground ball, preferably. He's a guy that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Lofted to shallow left field. Juan Rivera was already playing shallow. Makes the catch there is out number two. Hey, fans, you could save 50% off ticket prices and select seating areas for tomorrow and Wednesday's games against the Indians. Use the password angels at angelsbaseball.com or the Angel Stadium ticket window. Cleveland Indians rolling to town for the first of three tomorrow. You see the schedule on television all on Fox Sports West. Seven, seven, and four on Wednesday. Oh, this just in. We're going to KCOP my 13 on Tuesday. See, we're all about keeping things up to speed here. You're good with that, Victor. You get that late breaking information. Well, Gooby, one of these days, I will show you how to get dialed in. <laughs> well, I appreciate the help. <laughs> Couldn't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> Curtis Granderson Granderson with a sack button to strike out. Brandon Wood playing near the cut of the grass at third just in case Granderson drops one down, pops this one up. Long run in for Juan Rivera toward the foul line. There's out number three. Nicely done by Jason Bolger. Lead off home run by Robinson Cano. Makes it a one-run lead, but Angels still lead it five to four.
Bottom of the sixth inning, Angels up by the score of five to four. The pinch hitter Brett Gardner remains in the game out in left field. Alfredo Chavez, who came on in relief of Boone Logan in the fifth inning, remains out there. He'll face the bottom third in the Angels order, Kendrick Napoli and Brandon Wood. Well, the Angels got to get those hitting shoes working once again. Day game here. Baseball flies. You still got nine more outs to get out of that bullpen for the Angels against the Yankees. Dangerous hitter, so get that offense going. The Angels have out hit the Yankees 6-3 to three in this one, but two of them for New York. Home runs, a two-run shot by Posada, solo shot by Cano. The Angels have one. That was Bobby Abreu against Javier Vasquez in the third. It's Howie. Browns went sharply to short. There's that number one. So Kendrick now one for three. Kevin Jepson's up and loosening now for the Halos. So he'll be coming on in the seventh. Take a look at our Lexus pursuing perfection. Scott yeah. Kasper today did not have his best stuff. He didn't have his best stuff, but he did mix, mix in some quality off-speed pitches, which was the key for him. Then he had a fastball at times. He can rush up there 89 91 and he gave up three hits in five and a third in line for that second W should the score remain Napoli stepping out of the box with the Sevis and Cervelli taking some time Vasquez was taken out in the fourth inning it's three and a third for him three and two-thirds pardon me Mike's 0 for 1. Come back into the pitcher to walk with a run scored. Well, a cut fastball on the inside corner called against Napoli. A fastball on the outside corner called against him. Not real happy. Rolled over to Teixeira. Two outs. Teixeira playing way off the line in that situation. The seven is much like Vasquez. Doesn't really come inside. Doesn't challenge guys by the true definition or nature of pitching. But likes to hit his spots. Not an overpowering guy. Hits his spots. And he backs up that fastball in the outside corner with a changeup. Which is his best pitch. And really, when you start talking about guys coming over from Mexico, Mexican pitchers to come to the big leagues, very seldom do you find the overpowering type. A lot of off-speed stuff. If you look at Joaquin Soria and what he's done in Kansas City with that terrific changeup as well. Brandon skying one out to right center field. Nick Swisher long run in. Gives way to Curtis Branderson. There is out number three. A one, two, three inning. Angels go down quietly, but still have a five four lead after six.
glorious Sunday afternoon. Mike Sosha going to the bullpen, trying to shorten the ball game up. Kevin Jepson, the fireball, comes on in place of Jason Bolger, who went two thirds of an inning, retired the two men that he has faced. That great stuff. Fastball 97. You see the amount of strikeouts, nine and eight innings pitched. Good cut fastball, swing and miss, curveball. This has got to stay within his mechanics. Also, every once in a while, mixing a changeup. We've seen that a little bit over the last couple of outings for Jefferson in that he's relied more on that fastball. He's got such good life, and when he spots it, almost unhittable, as opposed to pitching backwards and throwing a lot of hard breaking pitches early in the count. Cervelli, Jeter, Swisher, 9-1-2. and two. Cervelli trying to bunt his way on. Jepson's got it. About 97 miles an hour from down under over to first, and there's out number one. As we take a look now at the Land Rover game recap. Well, you can see this pitch out over the plate. Basada came in with a 407 batting average against Scott Casimir. Goes dead central. But Bobby Abreu said, I can do it better. I go deeper. But Robinson can know what a series he's having for the Yankees against the Halos. Goes yard also. Three big flies in the game. Here's our Land Rover game recap. Oh, we said it early with this being a day game. The ball jumping. Especially on that double that Thames had to the alley in left center field. I know he's a, an extremely strong man. But change up down and in. Who the ball is going to be carrying. But I tell you what. Credit Scott Casimir, credit Jason Bolger thus far for limiting this Yankees offense to just three hits. The team that came at batting 273, the third best batting average in baseball. 1 0 from Jepson's inside, two balls and no strikes. Jeter is 0 for 3, but had an RBI in the second. That was a fielder's choice. Angels trying to turn the double play. The runners at the corners and could not. So Jeter picked up his 12th RBI. Right off the mask of Napoli. And it's 2 and 1. 2 0 fastball. Challenged Jeter. Kind of straight back and got the mask of Mike Napoli. Well, you cringe now every time that there's a foul ball back to the catcher. The injury to Jeff Mathis, Bobby Wilson now. Ryan Buddy now has joined the ball club. Fouled off to the right. It's two balls, two strikes. Well, that was that cut fastball. Still pretty firm at 89 miles an hour. It is the one now. If you could throw that curveball, that swing and miss curveball, if you could stay within your mechanics, you got a chance of getting a strikeout against Jeter. Two two. Four, Not in on the hands there. Fourth of, nine, fourth of 97. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. That'd be, that'd be a blast to take 97 mile an hour out there to the mound just once. Just like going to a carnival. You know? Hang your dollar being able to blow 98, 97. Got him on the breaking ball. Nice pitch there. Two outs. Well, an electric slide piece on the outside corner. That was filthy at 91 miles an hour. Well, it starts. On the corner, then off the corner. No chance for a great hitter even like Derek Jeter to make any contact. Two outs for Nick Swisher. He's 0 for 2. Lined out. Fly ball to center to walk. Revisit the Hyundai keys to the game. Scott Casimir today, five and a third, three hits, four earned runs, four walks, three strikeouts. Much, Solid. Much like Irvin Santana on Friday. Did not have the best stuff, but trying to keep your team in the game, close there to you chip away and try to get back into it. Like I said many a times, more gratifying if you get that win when you don't have your best stuff, that you battle long enough to give your team a chance to win. A lot of pressure on the bullpen to throw up some zeros, but the reality is you did your job. 
Wow. <laughs> One and two. That was nasty. Slider. Swisher is starting to bat head out. Realize that ball was behind his back foot at 90. Look at this pitch. I mean, that's nowhere near the zone. And Swisher has been known as a guy who has a good eye at the plate. Two and two now. We wonder if that wasn't just a show me fastball up in the zone so I could throw that same slider down and in. Two two. Out to center field. Playable for Tory Hunter. Shading the eyes and Kevin Jepson goes one, two, three through the Yankee lineup here in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A. Halos up by the score of five to four as we turn things over to David Courtney. As with all major league clubs on Sunday, we ask you to please rise, remove your caps for the singing of God Bless America. Please join Taylor Longbreak. Nothing like a little buttercup to get you going for the bottom of the seventh inning. Five to four Angels up. Top of the order is Sturis, Abreu, and Hunter. I'm trying to get my breath back. I mean, that, if you had not gotten your cardio in this morning, you just did during that commercial break. I've never seen you move like that. <laughs> Some good moves. So Sturis off the end of the bat. This one foul. No balls and two strikes. Mice are getting to start at shortstop. For Eric Ivar, 
0 for 3, but picked up an RBI in the fourth inning. His eighth of the year. This one's pulled over to second. Robinson Cano's got it. There's out number one. Fernando Rodney's up in Lucian. He'll come on and pitch in the eighth inning, one would assume. And Joe Girardi making sure his bullpen gets some work here this afternoon. We'll go out there once again with Bobby Abreu coming up. Left hand advantage. Go to his lefty, Damaso Marte. So Fredo Seves, who faced five batters and retired all five, is done. Here comes Marte. We're still in the seventh. Five, four Angels. Kendra Morales at 63%. Outpacing Howie Kendrick and Hideki Matsui at 18%. Bobby Abreu at 1%. Bobby's getting hot. He is. Good James. We'll have the results. One swing of the bat. It might change by the post-game show. Post-game show will have the results. Thomas Marte comes on in relief of Alfredo Chavez pitching now in his eighth game. No earned runs allowed. Two walks, three strikeouts, and three and two-thirds. He's situational lefty for... Joe Girardi to face Bobby Abreu. Missing down low. Bobby's two for three with a single and a home run. He's also lined out. Marte could bring that fastball at times from the left side at 96 mile an hour. Goes from 90, 96. Good slider and a changeup. Outside with the fastball, and it's two balls and no strikes. Odds are if Marte retires Abreu here that we'll see another pitching change. 2-0. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. We're talking... Bobby about the struggles he's had going back to coming off that road trip in Toronto and New York. Talking about opening up, especially against left-handed batters, or pitchers, I should say. Mickey, obviously, the hard work that he does and all the coaching staff. But boy, I tell you what, you get a guy like Abreu who's got the track record that's locked in, driving the ball to all fields. 3-1. Takes down low. There's ball four. So the situational lefty didn't work as he walks Abreu. Brings up Torrey Hunter. Well, that ice cream is going pretty quick. That's Gooby and I sucking that down while Buttercup is being played here in the seventh inning stretch. It's loaded with energy. That bowl of ice cream had no chance. 
not zero. Here's Tori Hunter. Tori Hunter is 0 for 3. Double play and a couple of strikeouts. Yankees had some action going in their bullpen. That's why I assumed you'd go this way. And that ball hits Torrey. May have got him on the knee area, on the right leg. That's just a fastball cutting in on Torrey. And all of a sudden, we've got two men on here in the seventh with one out. We overthrew that pitch, Marte did. Fastball in over through it right around the knee level. It may have gotten him on the knee. The back knee, too. Slinger, when you throw from that three quarters action, if you drop your elbow at all, you're going to have those type of results. Torrey seems to be okay. He's tough. That's one of those as a hitter as well that you're tracking that pitch, you're watching it, you know you're laying off of it, thinking that pitch is inside, but you don't. Ever anticipated hitting your back leg, and sure enough, near that knee area. Not on a fastball, you're right. Mm -hmm. Maybe a breaking pitch, but not a fastball. So, Adeki Matsui with an opportunity to give the Angels some insurance. Abreu at second, Hunter at first. Adeki's 0 for 3. Three times he's hit a fly ball out. Yankees playing Matsui pretty much straight up both in the infield and in the outfield. Check swing roller on the third base side and that is going to be a force out at third. And Matsui legs it out to so safe at first. Abreu is retired for out number two. Well we've seen so many times when Bunce down the third or first base line it will stay fair. And Alex Rodriguez did a good job of staying with that. See how the ball normally most places that's going to run foul. End up going even further into fair territory. Just the other day, he was involved in a triple play. Pitcher's best friend. First and second, still two outs now for Kendra Morales. Intentional walk here to load him up. Little interesting situation here. I would imagine. Well, here comes Girardi. What sense is this making right now? Well, Girardi just came out. Now he's going back into the dugout. Time is called. That was Tim Cheetah, the crew chief, coming in toward the mound. David Robertson's ready to go. So maybe Cervelli got the wrong sign here. Signals crossed up. And there's got to be something going. There's no way you're going to walk a guy to load the bases when it's first and second. Now, what's the conversation about? And rightfully so, Alfonso Marquez going out there to break up the rock pile. I mean, there's no sense. Robertson's been loosening already, so he's ready to go. What could you be telling him if you're going to walk him anyway? Well, that's the point. You're walking somebody with first and second? I know Kendry is, is hot. Now they're not going to walk him. Kendry in this one has walked and singled twice. He's two for two.
There goes Torrey. Throw down by Cervelli. And the time's going to race. Also, a great idea, not only by Torrey to steal the bag, but Matsui to stay at first base. Because they would have thrown that ball back to second base if both base runners were going. Always easier for a base runner to steal third against a lefty. Before he gets that foot in there, everybody tries to catch the ball and apply the tag. We saw on that replay, too, with Alex Rodriguez vacating third base with a right-handed batter up. 2-0 now. Outside, three balls and no strikes. Right, right now, Mike Sosha is a guy that loves to see his hitters be aggressive 3-0. There's a fastball anywhere near the spot you want to drive it. Just a base hit, scores a run. A big fly gets three across. Pitch. He's hacking, drives one out the left center field. Hit pretty good. This one is gone! Kendry Morales, the Cuban missile with a three-run Jimmy Jack. Angels up eight to four. Well, as Earl Weaver would say, that is the best play in baseball. The three-run Jimmy John. Way back. 3-0 pitch. Green light. Gone. Maybe they should have walked him. But it's the second they thought about it. He who hesitates is lost. Sixth home run of the season for Kendry Morales. 16 runs batted in. The first earned runs allowed by Damaso Marte on the season. Off the end of the bat, it's one ball, one strike on Juan Rivera. 3-0, middle, gone. He knew it right away, Kenny. What a swing on that pitch. He was looking for a spot that he could drive and do some damage. Well, that's about as good as you can do. Smile from Tor. Now that hit by pitch doesn't feel quite as bad. 1-1. One, 1-2 one. One and two now. Boy, that was a good sound. I'm talking about squaring up a baseball. Now an off the railing in front of the Angels dugout. Let's see what Rivera has done this afternoon. A walk, a hit by pitch, and the fielder's choice. 0 for 1. He scored a run. How much does that mess up the whole first pitch intentional walk situation? Joe Girardi comes out a couple of steps. Does that mess with the guy on the mound? And yeah. then the conversation out there with Cervelli? Especially when you think about what is first and second. It wasn't second and third. And it's a full count. Again, when you have that opportunity, if you're the Angels, you got to take advantage of that. 3 0, and then you throw a fastball. Even though it was down, middle part of the plate. Well, this all started with Girardi bringing in Marte, the left-hander to face Abreu. And Bobby drew a walk. And that is down a left field line. Brett Gardner's coming on. He's there and makes the catch for the third out. But the Angels tack on three runs on Kendry Morales' sixth home run of the season on a 3-0 pitch. We are through seven at the Big A. Angels leading the Yankees.
six three run shot eight to four angels we start the top of the eighth inning and the pitcher on the mound for Mike Sosha and the Halos is Fernando Rodney takes over and great job by both Jason Bolger and Kevin Jepson thus far nine games innings pitch has been throwing a great fastball and changeup his fastball's been rushing up there with movement in 94 95 and his changeup been unhittable 2 and 0 oh, mark two as far as the record but what about Kenny Morales? What a game. Amazing. But so many hitters don't like that 3 0 swing to get themselves out. But Kenry just patient, got his pitch, three run homer. To share Rodriguez Cano here in the eighth inning. Mark Teixeira has drawn a walk and hit a fly ball out to left twice. And with Teixeira up in the left side, the overshift is on on the right. Now one almost got him, and it's two balls in a strike. What a change up 2 1 change up by Fernando Rodney. The same arm action as his fastball. Change up now going with a fastball instead. And it's a full count. Yeah, he came out of his mechanics there, tried to force that fastball over through that one at 96. And it lays off of that. Teixeira draws the walk to lead off the eighth. Interesting bottom of the seventh inning with Damaso Marte out on the mound for the New York Yankees. You have the situation with Kendrick Morales up with first and second. Girardi calls time, starts walking out, and all of a sudden comes back in. And then all of a sudden, 3 0. Okay, they're going to walk him through a first pitch out of the zone. Then looked like maybe a pitching change would happen, and they didn't. Fell behind 3-0, then threw a 3-0 fastball over the middle. It was down, but it was over the middle part of the plate. Odd circumstance in that inning. Fernando Rodney not able to get locked in right now as far as strike throwing. Alex Rodriguez with a one ball, no strike count. A-Rod's 0 for 3, including a strike count back in the third. Again, this Yankee lineup is so dangerous. They want to give life by walking batters. Alex out the left center field. Here comes Torrey Hunter to his right. Makes the diving catch. Looks like maybe even knocked the wind out of himself, too, with the dive. Full extension. That's a nine-time gold glover. Center field. That ball initially looked right away was going to be in the alley for a double. Talk about intensity in the series against the Yankees. That's what you got. Torrey Hunter gets hit with a pitch on his knee. And what's he respond with? Diving play in the outfield. A-Rod retired for round number one. Teixeira still at first. And it brings up Robinson Cano. First pitch change up in for a strike. Cano's been hit by a pitch, a struck out, and Homer. He landed toward it right on his stomach. Pretty good pitch right there down the middle for a ball. Evens accounted one and one.
they're still trying to shake it off after that great play left center on a rod shot Rodney falling behind at three balls in a strike we saw him on Friday was solid in his one inning in the eighth gave up a walk there but retired Derek Jeter in that eighth inning on Friday night good off speed pitch there and it's a full count what the Robinson Cano is locked in that was a 3-1 change up he has to be looking fastball and he fouled that one back pretty hard straight back good location though, as you talked about early on about pitching him away I think the fastball in the outside corner right now will get him He'll hit the ball left field Another one down and away. Perfect spot. You see how quick he is on the pitch in the inner half. Or a last at bat. Get that solo home run. And Mike Butcher has got some good scouting reports on, on these hitters. And Robinson Cano showing that he can hit the ball in the inner half, but you have to execute that pitch on the outside. Show in off the plate, get him out of the way. So good action on the pitch. On the ground a second should be two four six three goes the ten killing Fernando Rodney the leadoff walk is erased middle of the eighth Angels up by the score of eight to four Lowe's, let's build something together. Back out here at the Big A, Angels up by the score of 8-4. to four. The Halos setting up the bottom third in their order. Kendrick, Napoli, and Wood against Sergio Mitre, who comes on in relief of Damaso Marte. Seventh year in the big leagues for Mitre. Has been used as a starter on occasion by the Yankees. Fastball, 85-90. to 90. He's got a curveball, slider, and a changeup. Curveball is best pitch, but been inconsistent for him. Mitre coming off Tommy John surgery in 2008, did not make his Yankee debut till July of last season. Came up as a starter with the Chicago Cubs. He spent time with the Florida Marlins as well. His numbers overall as a reliever, not that good. 0 and 3 with a 628 ERA. 
Thomas Marte for his part lasted two thirds of an inning. Gave up all three runs in the eighth. He did it by walking one, hitting a batter, giving up that three run home run. Kendrick out to right field, chasing Swisher back, still going back and makes the catch at the track for the first out. Howie a one for four afternoon with an RBI. Brings up Mike Napoli. Hey, all fans in attendance, this, this Tuesday will receive a free Angels cooler courtesy of Sparkless Home and Office Delivery. Cheer on the Angels and get a free cooler by purchasing your tickets at angelsbaseball.com. So one out here in the eighth, brings up Napoli. Walked and scored. He's also grounded out twice. So an 0 for 2 day. <laughs> Napoli pulling that one foul. Mitre, the fifth pitcher used by the Yankees today. Javier Vasquez got the start, went just three and two thirds, giving up five earned runs. Scott Casimir in line right now to pick up his second one of the season while Vasquez would take his third loss. That is just foul. Boy, Napoli real quick on that pitch on the inner half. Trey trying to stay inside. Dangerous spot for him against Napoli. One and two now. Kendra Morales, big game for him again. Three for three day. Two singles in that home run. What a swing. 3 0. Three run homer. Rule insurance. The Eagles need it. Two balls, two strikes. It's just the second appearance of the season for Sergio Mitra. His other came back on the 9th of April. Full count. Dimitri's gone from 0-2 to 3-2. Brandon Wood on deck. The greatest closer to ever put on a uniform up and loose. He's getting his throwing in his work. And that's no disrespect whatsoever to the guys already in the Hall of Fame in that category. Napoli takes down low. There's ball four. A one out walk. Puts men on for the Halos. Brandon Wood. There's Scott Shields, and we would assume we'll see action in the ninth inning. I think they had better control yesterday when he came on and faced the Yankees in the loss. to left center field. Brett Gardner over to his left. Two outs. Brandon ends the day assuming the score holds through the ninth inning. A one for four day at the two RBI double that came back in the fourth inning. Meister Sturis steps in now with two outs and a man at first. Oh, for four day for him. In the top of the ninth inning, the Yankees have Posada, Gardner, Granderson due up. Six, seven, and eight. Yankees in this one have been limited to three hits. By Scott Casimir, Jason Bolger, and Kevin Jepson. 
as well as Fernando Rodney. The runner goes, and the throw is not in time, so Mike Napoli picks up a stolen base. The time to pick a pitch to go, 2-0. At that point, you're not even paying attention. Great jump, three or four steps. Our camera angle from right field picks that up. No chance. Now in scoring position for the RBI up. machine. That's the guy you want at the plate. A 556 average. We've been in scoring position this season. Now Cervelli and Mitri want to talk things over. Well, you're certainly not thinking of lines well. There's an open base, especially when you have Bobby Abreu on deck. Inside ball four. So Abreu will bat with runners at first and second. Second walk issued in the inning by Mitre. Bobby is singled, homered, lined out, and walked. So a two for three day. Napoli with a big lead at second as Duras from first. Down low. The home run for Bobby in the third inning, his third of the season. Now with 10 runs batted in. The Angels with three guys in double digits and runs batted in so far. And Abreu. Matt Suey and Morales. This has been kind of the pace throughout this ballgame. Very slow and delivered by Yankee pitchers. Uncharacteristic. The dirt. Cervelli blocks it nicely. It's two balls and a strike. Really, it was Javier Vasquez that set the tone. Kind of kept the Angels in check through the first two innings. Gave up the solo home run to Abreu in the third inning, but then in the fourth, the Angels touching him for four runs. Got him out of the game, but things didn't pick up from there. Yeah, when you slow down the pace that much, you, you give your opponent that much more confidence going up to the plate. It means you think that he doesn't feel confident enough in his stuff to get you out. So you're going to be comfortable at the plate. Two one. And I'm reaching for something off the fastball. It's two balls, two strikes. And Mathis with that cast on that right wrist hanging out. Brock Quinlan. Unfortunate for Jeff Mathis. He was swinging the bat so well, catching incredibly well. Full count. Napoli and Asturias will be off of the pitch. Tory Hunter on deck. Cold strike three on the outside corner. Alfonso Marquez brings up Abreu. It's been a floating zone this afternoon. We head to the ninth. Looks like Scott Shields will be coming on with the Angels up eight to four. 
looking for the series win. Time out as far as location and mechanics. Well, the big thing is, you know, Mike Butcher's work with Scott Shields, this calming down his delivery, very violent delivery. His stuff has been there, velocity's been there as far as the fastball, 91 to 92. His curveball has been excellent. Key is for Scott to stay within your mechanics. Landing foot going straight towards home plate. Well, he'll face Posada, Gardner, Granderson, the scheduled three batters here in the ninth. Pisana on this one, one for three. A two-run home run off Scott Casimir back in the second. It's down and in for ball one. Shields in yesterday's game went one inning, gave up two hits and a run. There's strike two. That's a big curveball. Hey, what? Scott Shields had his best curveball early on. The fastball command has not been there for him, but the curveball certainly has. Down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Pasada's home run in the second, his fourth of the season. He's off to a good start as well. The Yankee hitters today, as we pointed out in the eighth inning, just three hits. Pasada goes down, swinging down. He goes for out number one. We talk about some cheese at the knees on the outside corner at 92. That was a safety swing by Pasada, unable to catch up with that fastball. Run in action at 92. Start middle part and go off the corner. Filthy. Like Mike Sosha said, velocity stuff wise, it's been there. It's just a matter of getting it all back on track. Here's Brett Gardner. He pinch hit in the sixth inning, so he's 0 for 1. Marcus Temps got to start out in left field. The Angels with a win this afternoon, even their mark at 10 and 10 on the season. They moved to 6 and 8 here at the Big A. Not only would it give them the series win over the Yankees, kind of returning the favor that the Yankees did to the Angels in the Bronx a couple weeks ago. There's a strike. And it is one of two. But more importantly, this would be the first series loss for the Yankees on the year. They've won five straight series to start the season. 
One, two. Slap foul. One ball, two strikes. Yankees off to another good start. Came into this one with a 12 and 5 mark, a half game back to the Tampa Bay Rays. Playing well on the road, coming in today, 7 and 4 on the road. So Joey's having playing well both at home and on the road. And the Rays had a shutout today over the Toronto Blue Jays. They're off to a great start as well. That's a scary team. That's a pretty good arms right there. Andy Pettit, CC Sabathia, and AJ Burnett. Big reason why they won the World Series last year went with three man rotation. Schedule kind of worked out. Yeah, that did work out pretty well, didn't it? All those off days. Two balls, two strikes now, Brett Gardner. Full count now. Boy, go fastball right down the middle of the plate. Trust the movement. Scott Shields cannot throw a straight fastball. Come right back with the fastball. Into center field. Torrey breaks in. Now back a couple of steps and makes the catch. There's out number two. There's that ball carrying. Nice job by Scotty Shields there, too, going right with the fastball movement. Tough to center up. Good swing against Scott Shields when he's at. Had a chance to use that fastball and stays within his mechanics, throw strikes. Granderson takes out shot. He's 0 for 2, but had a sack butt back in the second. One and one. 42,284 here at the Big A on his. Absolutely stunning afternoon. Angels taking game one on Friday, dropping yesterday's game. There's strike two. And on the verge of picking up the rubber game of the series. Two two on the ground toward Howie Kendrick. He's got it like that baby up. Series win for the Angels. Eight to four. Courtesy of Kendry Morales and that big home run in the seventh inning. Boy, that 3-0 swing, three-run bomb. Big series win. A lot of drama in this series. Seven batters were hit. Great series win for the Halos after coming back and splitting that series with the Tigers two apiece. Angels now 10 and 10 on the season. Yankees fall to 12 and 6. The big man Kendrick with three knocks on the day including three runs batted in. Again the final. Angels beat the Yankees 8 to 4. Stick around for a complete wrap up of today's game with Bill McDonald and Jose Moda. Angels Live starts 